Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in or coming back or whatever it is. I appreciate it. Hope you're having an awesome day. And in today's video, I'm going to walk through workflow for uh, an HDR landscape, kind of a happy, fun sunset shot from Canada. And, uh, you know, I take brackets just about every time I shoot, uh, except on rare occasions. And uh, I don't always process them as HDRs. A lot of times, um, the middle exposure is plenty for me to work with. Um, and, uh, you know, therefore I'll just take that single exposure into Luminar and edit that. But I've been doing a lot more Aurora HDR lately. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I really like HDR. I know some people say, you know, hey, it's overdone uh, or it's, you know, clown vomity with too much color. And this one's pretty colorful or it's going to be when I'm done with it. Um, but, you know, sometimes that's half the fun of it. So um, I'm, I'm enjoying HDR and Aurora uh, in particular, and I'm going to keep doing some stuff like that. So. Let's roll into this photo. Uh, this is my base HDR. Here's, um, actually, you know what? Let me show you. I've got them here. So here's the three exposures. This is Lake Louise um, up in the Canadian Rockies. So there's the, the dark exposure, there's the middle exposure, and there's the bright exposure. So three exposures on a tripod, and you're gonna ask, so it's negative five, negative three, and negative one at F11. There you go. Um, and yes, I shoot dark normally, and that's because um, I think it works out fine, right? So dark, medium, light, and this is my final result. And after looking at the first three, you're probably like, you know, ow, my eyes. Um, and it's colorful, and in fact, um, I actually went back in and toned it down a little bit because it is pretty colorful. But I like color, and I can't really apologize for it. Um, so let me just close that, and let's get in here. Now, uh, I, I dropped them all into Aurora, of course, did the whole merge thing. Uh, there were people moving canoes. This was the end of the day, so I did a little de-ghosting. Um, did not do alignment because it was shot on a tripod, which I recommend uh, if you can do it, uh, but sometimes I shoot handheld too. Um, in the HDR basic panel, I just uh, made a few basic adjustments, as the name implies, right? My typical temperature and tint, left uh, to the blue and right to the pink. Um, added contrast, HDR enhance, and smart tone. And so I personally think the photo's looking much better already. There's the base photo, and there it is after the basic panel. So we're getting there. Uh, but then I went into color, and you know, boom, gave it a lot of blue. Um, and that's really, as you can see, I didn't even move the saturation. I just did vibrance, but the color contrast makes a big difference. Um, and I'm going to change out some of that blue in a little while because this was sunset. The sun was behind the hills, but there was no sunset business going on. Um, and it wasn't super colorful. So I'm going to uh, use color toning, also known as split toning here in a minute, to bring that up. Um, next, I added polarizing filter, as you just saw. And that sort of darkened that sky a little bit. I'm going to counterbalance or counteract that a little bit uh, on my last layer. But um, next up was color toning. And that was a pretty simple adjustment here. And if you're not using color toning, I highly recommend it. It's also known as split toning. I've been using it for years in Lightroom um, and, and Luminar and Aurora, and I, I just love it. Um, but uh, it basically allows you to adjust the colors in the highlights separately from the colors in the shadows. And generally, um, well, I don't know if generally, a lot of the times I'll just do the highlights. The shadows may or may not always need it. Shadows are generally kind of darker and therefore kind of bluish. Um, but um, the highlights, which is usually the sky, um, I, I, used, I, I like to give them a little bit of bump in color. Uh, and so here, you can see I just dragged the hue. Actually, I didn't drag the hue. I dragged the saturation slider for the highlights over to the right a little bit. It just gave it a little bit more of that pinkish kind of sunset glow. And let me show you the before. Very blue, uh, too blue, honestly. And then this looks much more normal to me. And um, I did a tiny bit in shadows, but just to warm them up a little bit, but that's it. So really at this point, I was kind of done with the photo. Um, I like it that way. I like it very much. That to me is very natural and very much what it looked like. Uh, but me being me, I, uh, I decided to go back and do a little bit more. So I went to the next layer and this was purely denoise. Um, all I did was just smooth out the water a little bit and the sky. I can show you the mask. Uh, let me show you that. Uh, I just painted a little bit of smoothing into the photo. Uh, there were, really wasn't any noise. There were no clouds. There was no structure or kind of crunchiness anywhere. I purely wanted it just to be a bit smoother, and that's what the denoise did. So, you know, if you didn't know this, you can just move your sliders, get it looking the way you want, and then you get your brush up here for your layer, and you brush it in, and that's what I did. So at this point, I actually really was done with the photo, and in fact, I set it aside and said, all right, I'm done. I think I'm done. I'm going to leave it. 
But um, as I said, me being me, I came back and, you know, choose your analogy, like curiosity killed the cat or whatever. But um, I was like, yeah, I kind of want to make it a little more colorful uh, because I like to make things kind of colorful. If you've seen my work, you kind of know that already. So I went back into HDR basic panel and here I added, um, this time I went temperature to the right. It was still pretty blue. Let me show you. Still pretty blue and, and I think beautiful, but I wanted to warm it up and give it more of that kind of sunset, kind of golden hour kind of punch. Um, and there's not a golden hour filter in Aurora like there is in Luminar. So I just went back on this layer and added temperature, went to the right and also uh, to the right with tint, added a tiny bit of smart tone. So I was pretty good there. And then so next I went into the color filter and as you can see, I actually decreased the saturation. It shows you right there, negative 10, uh, but I did bump up the vibrance and the color contrast. So let me show you the before and the after. It really starts to make that photo um, kind of kick a little bit uh, in terms of color. So I was feeling pretty good. I mean, it, it is saturated, uh, I'll admit it, and it may not be to your, be your taste, that's totally cool. Um, but I kind of like it, I'm having fun, and I'm trying to create a colorful, beautiful, um, almost like a painting, for lack of a better word. Not painting like, hey, the details are smudgy, um, you know, because of brush strokes, but rather just like a colorful sort of, I don't know, painting. I don't know what you call it. Anyway, um, so I added some image radiance here, and that was just a um, radiance. It kind of gives you that sort of romantic kind of fantasy look. Let me show you the before and the after. It adds a little bit of contrast and darkens a little bit of the photo. And so I wanted to add that mood back in. I think it works for me there. Um, and then I went one further, and this one is glow. And if you look at the sky, uh, glow basically is, uh, it gives, uh, it takes the brighter parts and it sort of makes them glow a little bit. So watch the sky, especially around the ridge line there, and boom, right? So it kind of brightens up that sky. And I don't know, I just kind of like that look. Um, and I made it very warm, so that also warmed up this guy. So you can see more blue and slightly darker and now brighter and a little bit more warmth to it. And that's the glow filter. Uh, next was top and bottom tuning. And this was pretty simple here. I add, oops, uh, here it is. Let me get into top and bottom tuning. Um, added a little bit of contrast in the top and that was it. Let me show you the before and the after. I think it makes the sort of the outline of the mountains against that clear sky really punch up a little bit. So I like that look. And then the last thing I did is I went into HSL and this is where I actually desaturated the photo a little bit. I took down the greens, the blues, and the aquas. So let me show you the before and the after. And so this is the final result after all that. It's actually slightly different than what I showed you at the beginning because that was my finished photo that I finished a day or so ago. And once I came back to it, I uh, got ready for the video. I decided, all right, it's a little too clown vomity, uh, even for me, and, and I love my big colors. Um, but that's a, a a basic workflow. So, you know, I do that a lot where I'll get to my base layer and I'll make all my adjustments. And, you know, other than denoise, which I always add at the end, I basically got to the end of that um, layer. Let me show you. And I like the photo. I mean, it looked very natural, looked very beautiful, and actually it pretty much looked like that. But that, that's when I decided I wanted to get a little bit more uh, artistic and colorful. And I wanted to add some warmth to really create that sort of alpine, golden hour glow kind of look. And uh, I was just doing that with these different filters, stacking them and just adding a new layer. So let me show you the before and after. Whoa, hello. Um, let me grab that slider. There's the middle exposure, right, from the three exposure set. And there's the final photo. So I can hold this down and show you the before and the after right? Very different, uh, a whole lot uh, more vivid, obviously, uh, but also a lot more visible into the frame. And that's one of the great things about HDR is you have the ability to sort of even out the light and have that, you know, sort of uh, equal distribution of light across the photo, which if you look at that center exposure, um, it's really dark around the hut over there and the trees behind it. But with HDR blending those exposures, it balances out that light and really gives you some visibility into it. And while I don't always want visibility through my entire photo, I did with this one because I think there's a lot of interesting things here. I like the jagged looks of the peak. I like the reflections of those and the different lines, how the mountains, they kind of come across and make an X with the reflection in the water. And then you have the rock and the deck there. So I wanted to give visibility all the way through it as though you could see yourself sort of walking on that deck and saying, oh, what a beautiful sunset. I just want to walk down here and check out those canoes, which I did. Um, so that's, uh, that's a workflow, and that's uh, one more time. There's the before, and there's the after. Hope it helps, my friends. 
hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And uh, that's it for today. I'm having fun with HDR, and I always do, and I'm gonna have more, and I'm gonna have more Luminar stuff too, as well as some other things. So keep coming back. I'll see you soon. Take care, my friends, and adios.